Hello and welcome to this India Today special where we are joined by a very special guest. Joining me is the Pakistani Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari who is here in Goa for the two-day Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting that has just concluded. Appreciate your joining us here, uh, uh, Mr. Bhutto Zardari. Welcome to Goa. Welcome to India. You're the first foreign minister from Pakistan to be in India in 12 years. But it appears that your visit has not been able to break the ice between India and Pakistan. From what we gather, no conversation with our minister, uh, Dr. Jay Shankar, unconfirmed reports of a handshake, and uh, little progress made in breaking the ice. Am I right to say nothing has really been achieved by you being in India? First of all, thank you so much for having me, uh, obviously, here in Goa, but particularly on your show, India Today. I like the opportunity to speak through you to the Indian people. Uh, as far as the uh, success of my visit, well, the aim of my visit was to attend uh, the SCO, of which Pakistan is a member. Uh, and to that end, my s visit has been successful. Mm -hmm. As far as Pakistan's position on bilateral relations with India uh, or any meaningful engagement or dialogue with our Indian counterparts, our position remains unchanged. And that is that until uh, India reviews the actions it took on August 5th, 2019, uh, it, Pakistan is not in a position to engage bilaterally with India. So that's your unchanged position. Our position is equally firm. Terror and talks don't go together. And until Pakistan is seen to actively do enough to stop cross-border terrorism, to sponsor terror outfits like the Jaish and Lashkar, we can't talk with Pakistan. So it seems, therefore, that the two countries are in, as I said, a deep freeze. How do you respond to India's position? You cannot have terror and talks coexist. So as far as India's position is concerned, terrorism isn't anything new. It's an old challenge, and despite uh, having to face this challenge, we have had on and off talks. So as far as being a consistent position, I don't quite know how consistent it is. Uh, as far as the issue of terrorism, Pakistan wants to deal with terrorism not because India says so or the Indian government said so, but because we want to uh, end this menace. It has caused the largest number of c uh, casualties uh, amongst any of the SCO nations present here today. Pakistan has suffered the most casualties. I myself stand here before you today a victim of terrorism. So Pakistan and myself are wholly committed to combating this menace. As far as uh, uh, accusations are concerned, um, we are ready and willing to engage and address any concerns that India might have. But India would also have to address our concerns. India would have to explain what uh, Kulboshin Yadif not a non-state actor, a state actor, a navy commander, was doing in Pakistan, mm -hmm. carrying out terrorist attacks on Pakistan soil. Does that not come under cross-border terrorism? Can I just stop Indi you, Mr. Foreign Minister? If you Mr. allow Mr. me to complete, yes. and then yeah, of sure. course, you're, uh, that's one such mm -hmm. complaint. Then of course, we all know the incident of Samjota Express, uh, where we are yet to see uh, justice. Uh, the Lahore incident terror attack that I presented mm -hmm. the dossier before the United Nations. Um, all those questions need to be answered. You know, I can go on and give you a long list I of, of I Pakistani involvement in terror attacks that dates back to the Mumbai blasts of 1993 through what happened in our parliament, through Pathan Court, through Pulwama, through Uri, even to Poonch three weeks ago. The fact is, the evidence that, you're, that Pakistan provides, whether it's about a Kulbushan Jada, whether it's about a Lahore bus, uh, 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 the terror attack, has not been backed by international agencies. In the case of Pakistan, we've seen Mr. Uh, Bhutto Zanzari. The, so the fact is that such this, a senior no, no, let's be very clear, and, uh, very clear that this is backed by credible evidence. I see. 
will you allow me to respond or would you continue? No, I'm, and, you know, these are credible evidence. Sure. I was am I doubt it? Where I you live. And Dawood Ibrahim, I, responsible I, for the attacks of 93, still continues to so. be there. Hafiz Saeed, no action, credible action taken for 2611. Uh, Masood Azhar for Parliament, for, uh, for Pulwama. So, you know, we can, we can give you a long list but of the evidence. The point is, while you claim to have a long list, you refuse to accept mm -hmm. that Pakistan has any legitimate concerns. For example, you were saying that the fact that we've caught Kalbosh and Yadiv, we can show him to you. Mm -hmm. The fact that he was a Navy commander in the Indian Army is not uh, a legitimate accusation. Then who uh, is India to defend in Pakistani courts? Uh, who is this man, Kalbosh and Yadir? Who is Ajbal Kassar? No, no, but so, 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 you see, I am not, I'm not, I'm not denying there's a Mumbai trial ongoing within Pakistan. The reason that trial has not progressed mm -hmm. is because India is refusing to produce the witnesses necessary for us to take that case forward. If you compare that with the Samjota Express attack, over there, everyone was acquitted. We've sent but you we've seen this evidence of 2611, Mr. Foreign Sir, Minister. I'm not surely, doubting that you've surely, sent. You know, you I'm not doubting to, that you've sent you, evidence. You want to live in denial. This is the problem. This is not denial. This is the problem. The problem is I'm being very clear with you. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking with facts and I'm speaking rationally and unemotionally. But you are getting quite hyper. And I would like to suggest that if I you ask friends, sir, in 2611, with due regards, perhaps, Sir, perhaps just as you, you yeah, said today you, in, part not, in your speech that your mother died in an assassination, attack, uh, in an assassination so by surely, a terrorist, we've all if you suffered. lost friends at the Mumbai attack, you too would like to see the conclusion of the Mumbai trial. Yes. So perhaps you will take it up with the government in India that in order to conclude the Mumbai trial, India should consider sending the witnesses necessary in a court of law. We have a very similar legal system in India and Pakistan. We Here in, sir, you can minister. provide as many pieces of paper as you would like, but as your legal system works, mm -hmm. so does mine. Mm -hmm. And in your legal system, mm -hmm. along with those pieces of paper, you have to provide witnesses in order for a case to go forward. So until we have that sort of cooperation from the Indian side, this case cannot conclude. Now that I have shared with you mm -hmm. my position mm -hmm. on the Mumbai case that is sub judice and ongoing, mm -hmm. could you perhaps enlighten me mm -hmm. that under the Samjota attack that took place in 2007, where Pakistanis lost their lives, mm -hmm. why it is that India has been unable to hold anybody accountable for that terrorist incident mm -hmm. on Indian soil that resulted in Pakistani lives lost? So, the fact is, India has prosecuted all its terror cases under the rule of law. We even gave <laughs> Ajmal so Kassab, who was caught in a terror attack, the due process of law. But, but let me come to your response. Today, you, at, at the SCO, you said, let's collectively eradicate the menace of terrorism. Let's not get caught up in weaponizing terrorism for diplomatic point scoring. With due regard, sir, when you say that, isn't it the responsibility of Pakistan, which globally has found itself in the corner for having sponsored terror to first stop allowing its soil to be used for terror activities against India. Somewhere you've got to start, otherwise your, your words will sound hollow with all due regard, Mr. Minister. But it, uh, sir, the, our words or our track record speaks for itself. We are the only country on the planet mm -hmm. that has not completed one, but two financial action. Uh, task force objectives, one on counter uh, mm -hmm. t uh, terror financing and one on money laundering. Mm -hmm. As far as the issue of terrorism is concerned, the numbers speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. You can take out the data between uh, uh, sort of 2006 mm -hmm. up until 2014, mm -hmm. Pakistan was in a very difficult situation vis-a-vis -vis the activities of terrorists. We were facing uh, terrorist attacks almost every other week, but precisely because the whole of the Pakistani state across the political spectrum sat together, uh, came, with the, uh, came up with the necessary consensus that resulted in oper uh, operations in South Waziristan and in North Waziristan and a national action plan, we managed to break the back of these terrorists. 
And unfortunately, you're caught mm -hmm. in an old, stale perception about where Pakistan is on this issue. And I believe it would be more constructive if we engage on these topics, because I am saying this is a genuine issue for me. Mm -hmm. I understand that this is a genuine issue for India. I'm not denying the legitimacy of this concern. I'm just suggesting the way that you're engaging in trying to resolve this concern is not necessarily the most productive. You're saying have an open dialogue. You will express your concerns. We will express your concerns because today you argued that you, in, in your speech, that you felt the pain of terror because you lost your mother to an assassination by a terrorist. You then went on to say we must stop conflating non-state actors with state actors. But for that, sir, the state must act, Mr. Uh, uh, Bhutto Zardari, with in a non-partisan fashion against all terror. Absolutely. You can't sponsor terror directed but against India and then fight terror within Pakistan or across sir, the Turan with Afghanistan. Do you agree that you know? One man's terrorist cannot be another man's Absolutely. freedom fighter. Absolutely, and that's our position. That's what I want you to do. I want you to break this fiction that has been fed to you, that we have a different perspective on this issue. I believe that this line of argument, mm -hmm. this wolf whistling around the world terrorism, mm -hmm. which is ultimately an Islamophobic wolf whistle, not only to whip up um, Hindu sentiment at home here in India, but also to browbeat Pakistan. That might be a good electioneering strategy for some, but it's certainly not an effective counter-terrorism strategy. What I'm trying to explain to you, mm -hmm. there would better coordination, and I absolutely agree that not only us, but the international community needs to coordinate better vis-a-vis -vis this topic. We can achieve far more than we have today. Pakistan has achieved in our fight against terrorism across the board. We don't, this doesn't serve our purpose, neither does it serve your purpose. So why, do, moment, why do groups like the Jaysh and Lash, uh, Lashkar continue to operate from terror camps within Pakistan? Show the world credible action. I mentioned Daud Ibrahim, sir, because the fact is he lives in Clifton, which is where you live, and the fact is he's lived there since 1993 when the Mumbai blast took place. Act against him, hand him over to India, and maybe that will be the kind of gesture that breaks this frozen peace. So, but the, the frozen priest is a result of the actions of the 5th August 2019, where India unilaterally violated not only international law, not only UN Security Council resolutions, but also bilateral agreements between India and Pakistan. If we are to have any engagement, if we are to have any dialogue, ultimately, presumably, that will lead to some sort of documentation, some sort of written, written agreement. And what trust can India and Pakistan have? on India's commitment to bilateral agreements or even multilateral agreements, mm -hmm. we've seen that they've treated, whether it is our bilateral mm -hmm. arrangements or um, United Nations Security Council resolutions is nothing less than a piece of paper. You know, the fact is what happened on August, uh, in August 2019 is an Indian internal issue. <laughs> issue. Jammu and Kashmir is an integral so part of this not, country. So you're an no, Oxford educated no, no, let's, let's be very clear. You, you, you know the position of international of course, law. No, no, you, you, you know United you Nations sir, Security Council resolutions. The third time you mentioned UN Security Council resolution, those resolutions also call for Pakistani army to withdraw from POK, from Gilgit, Baltistan. Are you willing to do that? Sir, we can I, go. I, I, obviously, when I say abide by the UN Security Council resolutions, that means I too I'm ready to abide by the Security so you would Council resolution. From what is, what we call I, too, I too would Kashmir. be willing to be. I too would be willing to abide by the United Nations Security Council resolutions. What I wonder is, what confuses me, mm -hmm. is why the largest democracy in the world, mm -hmm. uh, a country where if the government, I'm not, not sure about the government, but the people value being a democracy. Mm -hmm. Why? Why on earth would it be scared of a plebiscite or a referendum of the people of Kashmir deciding their own? Fate? Are you willing to, therefore, based on what? you've just said, withdraw Pakistani army from POK, Gilgit, Baltistan, as per the UN resolution, because we're, we're, that is also part of the UN resolutions, right at the very I'm top. I'm not denying, I'm unlike you, I'm not choosing to read only one line of the res, mm -hmm. uh, United Nations Security Council resolution, mm -hmm. but see it in its entirety. Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting uh, unilateral action by Pakistan, unilateral action is what you did on August 5th, 2019 in Kashmir. Mm -hmm. Unilateral action, violation of our bilateral agreements and international agreements. You know, Mr. Bhutto, 
the fact is in this brief conversation already so far has revealed the huge trust deficit that exists. No, it is a no, fact deficit. No, no, just deficit. a minute, sir. Prime Minister there is Modi. a fact deficit. No, pri pri Prime Minister Information Modi. Information deficit. Pri Prime Minister Modi came to power in 2014. The first act came was. To where? Came to power in India in 2014. Sure. The Prime Minister invited Nawaz Sharif to his swearing in. Mr. Sharif came. He was then in Pakistan, came impromptu, met Mr. Sharif in December 2015. What happens a few weeks later? Pathan Court, a terror attack. How do you build trust when we've seen it happen with the Lahore bus yatra was followed by Kargil? There is no trust because Pakistan so has exactly not done what? enough to ensure trust. Tali do Sir, Tali exactly do haj se bachti hai. So if you are saying that the government of Bharat, the government of Sharm al-Sheikh, that we are involved in Bharat, Balochistan, we support Pakistan forces in Balochistan. Then after that... No, Pakistan, India didn't admit that at Sharm al-Sheikh. Again, another history lesson, that's a separate topic. And then, after that, in support of its support, we have a Kalboshan Yadav, an Indian citizen, who is India's Navy commander, वो पाकिस्तान में पकड़ा जाता है तो क्या दिस इज अ स्टेट एक्टर डू यू नॉट सी अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ स्टेट एक्टर एंड अ नॉन स्टेट एक्टर नो आई डोंट सी द डिफरेंस व्हेन द नॉन स्टेट एक्टर्स आर एक्टिवली स्पॉन्सर्ड बाय द स्टेट एक्टर्स व्हाई वुड स्टेट एक्टर्स स्पॉन्सर नॉन स्टेट एक्टर्स टू कॉज द लार्जेस्ट नंबर ऑफ कैजुअलिटीज इन आवर ओन कंट्री बिकॉज़ दे दे डू इट व्हेन इट इज डायरेक्टेड अगेंस्ट इंडिया यू एक्ट अगेंस्ट टेरर व्हेन इट इन्वॉल्व्स योर ओन सिटीजंस बट नॉट व्हेन इट इन्वॉल्व्स इंडियंस आई थिंक दैट इज ट्रू फॉर यू व्हिच इज नॉट ट्रू फॉर अस यू नो your own belligerent comments in a way at times on prime minister modi uh, mr foreign minister have also not helped uh, it seems that when it comes to mr modi specifically and india in general pakistan leaders want to cater to your own domestic gallery you made the kind of comments that make it almost difficult if not impossible to see how this trust deficit is bridged so first of all i think if you assess the domestic politics of both countries it is in india where uh, Pakistan plays a larger role in your elections, whereas India does not actually feature in our elections. As far as politicking is concerned, we see it from the Pakistani perspective that every time there is an election in India, be it regional elections or national elections, mm -hmm. there is a, uh, the, a so-called terrorist attack that is exploited for electoral gains. We have no problem with any individual. And our words never intended to cause any effect. Those words were not my words. They were your words. No, you sir, I was yes, but who was I quoting? I was quoting uh, the Indian citizens. Anyway, I don't want to rehash a conversation that has already happened mm -hmm. or quote a BBC documentary. Uh, the, we, can, we can have issue with the, the choice of words uh, mm -hmm. that anybody uses. But everybody knows that neither politics is personal nor diplomacy is personal. Mm -hmm. The question before the people of India or the government of India is, do you want to create an environment that is conducive to talks? Do you want to implement your own stated foreign policy agenda, which is neighbors first? And if India's foreign policy's motto is neighbors first, then they have to do some sort of engagement with one of their neighbors. India's foreign policy wants our neighbors to be good neighbors. They want our neighbors to be neighbors who will not promote violence, who will not target Indian citizens. That's all that they want. We want Pakistan to show and prove with credible evidence that they have stopped sponsoring terror activities. And we can then have a normal relationship, which we all want. At the moment, there's no trade. There's no, uh, 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 there are no transport links. Visas are difficult to get. We want to have a better relationship, but you've got to make that effort. You've got to do more. So the world really, wants you to do more. So we're working uh, for ourselves, not for you, to deal with this issue. Uh, our, and it is an issue of serious concern. If we're going to turn terrorism into a political point, whether it is for domestic politics or to your politics, then we will not be able to resolve this issue. And uh, frankly, at the moment, this issue has become far more complicated mm -hmm. since the fall of Kabul. Uh, the manner in which various terrorist organizations that are a threat to me, that are a threat to you, that are a threat to many other countries, are able to coordinate and conduct themselves today uh, was not the case a year ago. At the moment, the fallout of that is being uh, borne uh, by Afghanistan and Pakistan. As I said in my speech today, mm -hmm. we may, may, may be the first to be affected 
uh, but we will most certainly won't be the last. Mm -hmm. And despite everybody's emotions, despite uh, what may have happened in the past, what I'm uh, suggesting is we must work to Together, Foreign We'll see that in the general election, Mr. Foreign Minister, but I must ask you in conclusion, did you have a handshake with Dr. Jay Shankar or not? In all our unofficial engagements, we always shake hands when we meet. So you shook hands? Of course. Okay. And we had uh, a dinner conversation amongst a whole host of other foreign ministers, as one does at mm -hmm. uh, these sorts of events. We had, didn't hold a bilateral uh, okay. engagement. We'll wait and see where, therefore, that handshake goes in the future.